Hello and welcome to this demo of React Studio. I'd like to show you how to uh, take this sketch design for a small application we have here and turn it into this uh, web app uh, mobile first design which is responsive. We have a screen here called uh, Destinations which scales pretty neatly between different screen sizes. This is actually a list as you can see. And then we have another screen which is this one with a button that for now simply shows a placeholder and this one last button also is a placeholder for something else so a uh, fairly simple application design but still uh, quite a bit of work to produce this in code uh, with react studio we can go from the images we have here in sketch into the full-blown application we just saw uh, the important thing to keep in mind about react studio which i'll open here and this is actually the final uh, document for this mars application but for now, we'll swap to an empty project. So the important thing to keep in mind about React Studio is that it's uh, not really a design tool. Neither is it a programming tool, but it's an integration tool, a modeling tool that lets you bring in both designs and code in whatever style you prefer, and integrate those to build, to assemble applications uh, that target the mobile web. It produces uh, progressive web apps, PWA by default. So these are applications that behave very much like native on a device. So you could take uh, this application here and install it on a device home screen using the PWA feature and it will uh, show up on a mobile device without the address bar and all these uh, extra browser-like uh, user interface Chrome. Uh, but uh, jumping back to uh, our sketch document, uh, what we'd really like to do here first and this is an important part about making your designs compatible with the React approach. Uh, we have here uh, used a symbol for these buttons, which all have the same style. And uh, we really want to make sure that these symbols get transported first to uh, React Studio uh, intact. So let's try this with just the main menu first. Go here to Plugins, Transfer to React Studio, and Transfer Selected Artboards only. And this takes us back to React Studio, where we can see that our main menu screen has been moved here, and also a component called Mars Main Button, which is the symbol we had in on the sketch side. Uh, we have here a screen that was placed there when the project was created. We can just delete that, and instead let's make this main menu the first launch for our application. Uh, jumping in here by double clicking we can see that there's something definitely missing from the experience we saw as the final application uh, in particular these button labels are missing uh, looking back on the sketch side we can see that these were actually uh, using a sketch feature called overrides to set the label within the symbol and this is something uh, that is fairly compatible with the React approach of using properties. So our uh, Sketch plugin actually lets you move properties, direct, uh, sorry, overrides directly into properties. But we need do need to tell React Studio that hey, this text field right here is something that we'd like to be controlled by a property or prop, as they're often called in React. So let's go here over here in data and create a new property called label. And now we can see that this component uh, line appeared here showing our components properties. You can think of this as the inputs for this component when it's used in different contexts. The props are what you can use to customize how it appears. And going back to the previous screen, now we can actually see that the proper content appears here. The React Studio Transfer plugin did bring in this data. We can go in here in the uh, nested comp component uh, tab to view that. For the label property, we have a default default value, which is the data that was brought in from Sketch. So that looks uh, fine at this point. I think we can simply bring in the other screens as well. But we do need to do one thing here. Uh, we need to tell the Sketch importer that uh, this uh, component here should be mapped to a symbol called Mars main button. This is a, a hint for the importer that, hey, we don't want to bring this symbol in again. Whenever the importer sees a symbol called Mars main button on the sketch side, it will simply place this component instead. Uh, so with that done, we can go back to sketch. Uh, 
uh, pick our other two screens, use the transfer plugin to transfer those as well. And uh, voila, here we are, we have the main menu, two more screens appeared here, destinations, preservation, they are using the same button plugin, which we can confirm by going in here, our call now button has been properly linked to the uh, component there, and actually this value has been placed as well. So here we can see that uh, moving from sketch overrides to actual React properties works uh, as intended. Uh, there's a couple things we would certainly need to do here, jumping back to the main menu. We can see that, all right, the device previews over here, which show a number of typical screen sizes, uh, especially we still want to sort of remind you that you should <laughs> keep in mind that uh, there are quite a few users who have this iPhone SE size of screen. So it's a good idea to make sure that your design flexes all the way to this small size, uh, which is a principle of mobile first design that uh, that we try to remind you about with React Studio. But there's plenty of tools in React Studio to make your designs responsive, to uh, make them flex to, to the uh, various screen sizes. One of the pretty useful tools is a key line, which you can find here. Key lines are basically proportional lines. What we could do to make, uh, for example, we could take these elements right here and make the right edge aligned to the key line over there. So let's go to the layout tab, remove the left alignment we had and instead replace it with a right alignment on the key line. And now these elements are attached to the key line and you can see that if we place the key line roughly at the center, it uh, is placed at the center uh, on all these device sizes as well. So key lines by default work act as uh, proportional in proportion to the to the screen width, which tends to be pretty useful. Uh, for this background image as well, we need to do some adjustments since obviously we don't want to be cut off like this. So, you know, let's just uh, make it fill the screen by default uh, and instead of having it float from here, align the top, let's remove the top alignment completely and align the bottom instead. And we can just bump it down a little bit to give it the bottom offset. And this already looks much more decent. Um, um, I have limited time for this demo, so I, I'll just show you quickly what happens when we open this in the web browser. And what happens here is that uh, React Studio actually has created a complete React code project for you. It's using the Create React app uh, scaffolding created by Facebook, so this is very valid React code. You can. Uh, either go in the file system and take a look at the project or there's a code glance feature here that gives you a quick glimpse of, of how the how the actual code looks. Uh, but looking back in the browser, we can see that all right, this responsiveness we just did seems pretty good. However, these buttons don't really go anywhere yet. Uh, that's easily fixed. We can just click on the button, go into interact, and here we see a couple of interaction modes, uh, operations, and what we'd like to do is go to destinations for this one. And for this one, we'll go to reservation. And uh, taking a quick look at the destination screen, we can arrange these a bit better to see how the flow goes between our screens. Uh, Jumping into the destination screen, we can see that, okay, there's work to be done here as well. The placeholder for a list that we brought in from Sketch uh, doesn't really make sense in the design at this point. So what we should do really is uh, delete this one and just select these elements and use the make list button to put these into a list. And at this point, it offers to create a data sheet for me. Uh, which will try to guess what kind of props would be appropriate for a list item here. Uh, I'm not going to do that since in a uh, second part of this demo, I would like to show you how to make a data sheet from scratch. So for now, let's just put this in a list and uh, we'll just default to having, having a no content here for the properties yet. Uh, but let's uh, try open web browser
takes a second for it to come online. Now we can see that okay, our links are working. There's nothing here, but we're also missing something, a uh, back button to take us back within this uh, application. That wasn't part of our original sketch design. So what we could do, we could go back to the sketch design, edit there, or we can just use the buttons available here in React Studio, uh, in the elements list. You'll find a couple of containers, list, grid, responsive columns, pretty useful, responsive swapper, a way to make your content, uh, make the application di display different content on different screens. And then we have a, a bunch of uh, more sort of atomic elements, as we call them, UI framework buttons, which actually is something you can swap out with a plugin. But in this case, we'll just use an icon button. Let's put it up there. Uh, let's swap out the uh, icon for one of these templates, just left arrow. And actually here's uh, one thing we need to modify. This was placed in the scroll flow group by default, which means that we would like this content to be scrollable. But what we actually need to do here is we'd like this button to float on top of everything else. So this should go in foreground instead. And actually what we should do for our other elements is to place those in the scroll flow and that way we'll have a, that will all scroll together. However, I'm running out of time for my demo right now, so uh, we'll have to wait for the second part of, uh, of this tutorial to see how to actually uh, build out the list. For now, I'll add an interaction on this button to go back. That's simply what it's called. Uh, we'll I'll click in open in web browser again to preview. And now we can see that, well, we have a button here that will take you between the screens. Uh, as a reminder, you can find the uh, finished project, uh, this one, the complete application. You can find that on our uh, Medium site, which is medium.com slash at React Studio. There's a project here, uh, sorry, a document here called uh, Transform Your Design System to Real Code, which shows the same uh, example we just saw. You can download, you can view the application there, you can also download the sketch project as well as the finished React Studio document all here. So if you want to play around with these elements without doing it from scratch, you can always get the materials from here. Uh, but those are the pieces to, to get you started with the Mars demo and uh, I hope to see you again in the next uh, tutorial session where we'll finish this by building out the list and loading some mockup content here, as I have here. And I'll also tell you a bit about how you can actually connect this to a real data source, so that uh, instead of having static content that was placed here in React Studio, you can instead have this come from a real backend. It could be something as simple as a Google Sheet, it could be your SQL server, it could be some custom built thing. The really interesting thing about React Studio is actually the plugin system, which lets you do basically uh, customize all these aspects of how the how the application is generated. So if you want to swap out uh, the UI framework or the data connection with something else, for example, bringing something in from NPM packages, you can always do that. We don't tie you to any of framework of our own. We don't tie you to any of our backend systems or hosting or anything like that. So. Uh, that sort of freedom, the same freedom you get by coding things from scratch is what you get with React Studio. Uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.